Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm just going to continue on painting here. Let's, uh, this time, let's work something with that open medium. Maybe a little bit more transparency to the petals and uh, get some stuff going. Work the roses a little more olive prima, a little more wet on wet. You know, this is uh, stuff that you can do with a lot of extender or uh, Matisse Derivans or Derivan Matisse here, that open medium that I showed you in one of the other videos here. This um, Derivan manufactures our Heritage Multimedia for us. It's our formula, but they manufacture it for us. Uh, they're a fantastic company. I've worked with uh, five different paint companies over the years, and um, then private labeled or had different manufacturers make different products for me. Derivan is by far the very best company I have ever worked with. We've had a 12-year working relationship now. They're fantastic people, and I absolutely so enjoy them. They're very supportive of us. Um, but this uh, open medium, their open medium, which is basically a real thick kind of sticky medium. I showed some of you um, the last time about this and you can just brush you can mix it in you can just brush mix it i'm going to take it out here and just mix a, a little bit like that and i thin it sometimes with extender you know if i want to do thinner techniques but when i'm doing portraits and stuff like that this is a fantastic medium it'll really slow down the drying time of your paint partially because it, it is slower drying but it makes it thicker it also gives it more of the consistency or feeling of oil so it feels like I'm back painting with my oils again so I'm just going to brush mix that in as I need it I might thin it down from time to time with extender and this is something that I suggest every acrylic artist out there get some of this and work with it and try it it takes a little bit to figure out how much you want to use it uh, but it's so forgiving and it gives such a great feeling to the paint. It really does. Okay, so I have my board, my NDF board, and I've base coated it and, um, with a, kind of a light brown. You can make it from red, black, a little bit of yellow and white. Um, or you can do like uh, I do is I get uh, medium beige and light gray and I put it in a big huge jar like this and I base coat, you know, couple dozens of these boards at a time and then just do it it works it's so well if you got a if you got I, I make what I call a base coating afternoon and just base coat up a whole bunch of boards get them all ready and then I sit down and paint so let's come in here we're gonna do some more uh, transparent translucent type techniques so I'm gonna set down more of a wet base coat to work into I'm gonna take a little extender and a little bit of my the medium here kind of whip this up a bit I love the way that feels. I love the way this medium feels. Um, let's take some yellow. Let's take some uh, red and yellow here and a tiny bit of black here. We'll slowly sneak into that black here. The black, if you go heavier black and yellow, you start to take it more to a green. Okay, if you keep that red in there, you, so you see it starts to go to a real tone kind of a green here. Keep that, that red in there and... Um, it will uh, make it more of a burnt sienna but you can make some real pretty colors here and you know you can splash let's just splash out some of this red that'd be pretty see that red come Christmas colors hey guys we're painting Christmas here we'll paint some Christmas colors let's splash some of that red out maybe a little bit cooler a little red violet in it add a bit of that medium add just a bit of that extender here, let's push some of that right into this area. Maybe make a stroke or two coming out. That nice, nice stroke like that, that is um, very much the uh, the uh, contemporary look. Now, I'm just going to rinse my brush a minute there and set that down. Now, this is going to stay wet for a long time. Um, and sometimes it's a little hard to work into when you got a lot of color on it. So I'm going to use my paper towel and just not take out all of it, but back out just a bit of it here, and uh, for my for my rose, push that around so I have just a bit of it onto the the surface here. Maybe we'll do another one right down over here. We'll push these coming in like that. Maybe a bud or something right up here. So we'll push it that direction here. Okay, so. Now what I'll do is take some of this red violet, nice cool, right in here with a little bit of that open medium in it. We'll push the dark, cool dark 
here bottom for the bolt so here's the center and then the bottom of the bowl here like that okay and uh, then we'll take some of this we'll also if that's going to be a bud we'll push some over here into this one coming off over to the side that'll be kind of fun now so this is going to be really wet as I'm going to work into here so and it's going to stay wet here's going to be my base basically of my rose I can shift it over maybe a bit more orange with some yellow and a touch of red which would make a pretty base for that I'll put some of that on it's going to stay wet that's the big thing um so some of my acrylic painters, I have some of my acrylic painters that have been acrylic painters all their life. They're gonna ha they're gonna fight this a little bit because you're gonna want it to you're gonna want it to dry up. You're not because every time let's see see this is what happens each time I'll put on a stroke see, and that's gonna stay wet. But the thing is when I put on that stroke see I pick up some dark. It picked up the dark on my off of my brush here, and if I stroke it again, it starts to disappear. And as you keep stroking it, it starts to disappear, 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 disappear. And and so it can really get annoying. Whereas acrylic painters, they put it on, it stays. Uh, this can be annoying. And so what you, it does teach you though is you don't paint too much. You strike on colors. So I'll strike on a color. I'll touch it a few times like that, and then I'll stop painting it. I usually will pinch wipe my brush a bit. I'll pick up like maybe some of the bottom shadow color of the rose and push that through the rose here. I'll push it real light, this fusion brush, you push it real light like this, see? Don't paint it too much, you'll lose it. We wanna keep this movement that that open medium and that extender are giving our paints here. I'm gonna take some of that yellow I'm going to push some of the light right into it. We'll just take a bit of that open medium right in here. Let's come right out here and let's push on this petal here. We'll pull that through. Can't paint too much there. Pinch wipe your brush. This is usually worth, when I used to be an oil painter and stuff, was where we would come in with a half tone. We'd take a little bit of a half tone and drop that in there. I don't want to touch it too much because I'll lose that light edge. That, that is what will happen. And so I'm going to pick up a bit more light here. And uh, maybe I'll pull a little bit of light in the yellow here. I'll pull another petal. And I'm going to hit and pick up some of this base here of this. Uh, and see, I'm letting the color just kind of run out of my brush here as I go around this side. Just kind of drawing in my rose. I will push the edges a bit. But you got to be careful how much you touch stuff because it'll continue to blend. And uh, those of you that have been tone painting with me, we won't want the blend. I'm going to take just a bit of that light. Let's close off the edge of that row. See, you get a nice stroke. If you stroke that again, you'll lose the power of it. And that's what I always say to you about Sargent. Always said one, two, three. That's the max you should ever stroke anything because... The stroke never has as much power as it does right there. So I'll, I'll back off to a half tone, a softer tone, push that in on the edge, and the end. then I'll leave that nice light edge up there like that. And this is why I really like the... Now you have to, if, you're, if you haven't pre-mixed open medium into your paint, you can't forget to add it. Otherwise, your colors will start to dry. Okay, so push this out and if you want to really test the beauty of open medium they've got a, themselves a beautiful medium here just put it out it'll be there all day like that so if it is if it's your paints are drying you're not feeding it enough you know and sometimes thin it out a bit with extender or whatever but the, the real key is to keep it thick like they say keep it nice and thick they really know what they're doing with it let's just draw this around and let those reds take over from the other side of the rows here pick up just a bit of that and just kind of push this around in here make kind of a pretty little movement and again I'm a movement painter I paint for movement into my flowers more than anything else and so but you notice that I'm not touching my flowers as much I don't push around with my finger as much as I do on some of the others because I'll soften it out too much. I'm usually directly loading my brush 
and putting on what it is that I need to have on because if I stroke too much because it's so wet if I stroke too much it's all gone so I have to be very careful or as soon as it starts to feel stiffer tighter um, you can start to uh, you know do some more manipulation now I'm gonna let that tack up just a bit and I haven't added a ton of open medium so it should tack up fairly quickly here not super quickly but let's push some of this in let's push a little shadow into it here let's just push a more of a rosebud right in here like this and notice I'll paint a little bit more because I want these colors in this rose back here to be a little softer here so I'm just gonna paint a little more so the colors mix up blend up a little bit more and stay a little softer here on this one let's pick up just a bit of light pick up an edge here push that in you can see you can work this and manipulate this and push this around pretty darn easy and that can give you if you go like this that can give you your translucent edges to the rose something we like to do every once in a while We'll pull some in here let's get this nice bull back in shape and try to see how I can just manipulate because it it's all wet stays all wet so you can manipulate it like that and get that nice lost edge back there which I do like sometimes it's push a bit of that medium in here let's go a bit lighter grayer kind of color and let's get this nice quick little rosebud out here this rosebud kind of an oval shape here just a bit of color there that's kind of pretty maybe uh, a, a reaching petal maybe it's starting to open up here and see it just strokes so smooth there and push that right in like that that's what that open medium is doing but it's really wet so and I want that just a bit lighter maybe right up front here and uh, push the bottom of that shadow in that that came off a bit so I'll push it just a bit more but see I like that that kind of movement of color that's what you get with those super wet colors you get that movement let's set some of that nice movement get some of that yellow that haunts the yellow back into here and push that over. see I can push that around I can really spark up maybe that yellow and red right in there because this is so wet in there see and it just slides around so you do have to be careful and some people will like it some people won't like it you know I've painted in so many years with so many different types of mediums I understand it and and uh, so I adjust how I paint I adjust how I paint that's the most important thing I you know I use the heritage acrylics okay this is the one thing that and I always tell my students this for a long time I was an acrylic and an oil artist and I moved completely acrylic and I likened it to a lot of different things but it's like I've learned how to really control it so you know I don't care what you use I really suggest that if you're multimedia if you're painting watercolor you're painting oils you're painting acrylics you're doing this every single one of those has a different feeling and those that can hinder you as an artist in your growth when you're trying to you know learn a new shape of a rose trying to learn a new brush when you're trying to figure out how to stroke a petal and then trying to overcome a new paint at the same time um, yeah, and yes, there's give and take. Some paints work better than others. But I decided that when I developed this Heritage Multimedia, I developed it to do a lot of different things. You can slow it way down. You can dry it real fast. You can use it as a watercolor. But it's always the same paint. It always has the same feeling. So you're concentrating on basically structural things, technique things. You know the paint. And I likened it to driving your car. I know my car. I know how hard to push the gas, when to start to push the brake. You go get in somebody else's car, it feels completely different. Go rent a car. I used to travel around the world, rent a car. For the first day, I'd drive that rental car around. It just felt strange. And then it slowly got feeling a little better and a little better. And uh, that's the same way. Now, okay, 
enough of that. Let's get back to this rose. So it's all still wet. See, everything's all still really wet. So now what I want to do, I want to preserve some of this color here. So I'm going to push some of that, a little bit of that into there. But I'm going to paint a little bit more uh, edge, petal edge technique here. So I'll pull and I'll pull the edge and I'll stop leaving some of that yellow and stuff there. So I'm going to basically, as I build this nice, beautiful queen rose right in here, I am going to basically uh, build or pull petals, just the edges of them, not pulling all the way down to the bowl, pulling just the edge. So I'll just take like a little bit of this. So just watch this, just draw on the edge of this petal. Just draw it on right here like this. Wipe your brush. Now you can use your finger or the brush. We can put a little bit of that cool color in there and just touch that in. That's it. Don't go a blending stroke back and forth. You'll lose the beautiful movement that we developed on this rose. We can take just a bit of that. Let's add an extra little petal right in here. And this just comes to a point where, you know, it's kind of like, okay, how am I building my rose? That's, this is where you've got to look at some rose structures and you know, and I would, uh, and I'll, I'm gonna thin this out for just a second and run right through that to take out some of that extra paint here so that that thins out just a bit so it's softer, see? But you'll, you know, you'll have to figure out some of the rose structures and stuff. And of course we've got classes on that if you wanna go do that, take those and learn that way. I might pull out just a bit here with a little heavier color. And I don't want to lose that yellow in there, so I might even just add it right back in. Pull some out, see? Take a bit of that red. See how nice and wet that is? And it just feel, just pull a little bit of that out so you don't lose that color. Back and forth just a touch. Let's take just a little bit more maybe here. We'll put one more petal down like that here. That's kind of pretty. A little bit of yellow on the bottom of it there. Don't want to lose all of that lovely movement in there. And that's kind of nice. Let's add, let's take a little bit of the darker color, some of that yellow here. A little bit of the red. Push an edge of that light and be very careful about pulling in a lighter petal over here. We'll stop, kind of stop right at that bowl right there. Puts another petal in, it kind of fills up the rose a bit. Let's thin our color so that we can just take a real, almost removing stroke here. So we keep a lot of that beauty of that rose. Maybe a little bit more light color here. Maybe right in here like this, pulling down build the light front of that rose just a bit more. A little heavier white here. I do like to build and maybe a bit more light onto this edge here. And again, that's... Now, see, the other thing is your acrylics will dry down. So you have to kind of plan for that. So I tend to overpaint the light. So see, I'm whisper stroke but I tend to overpaint the light just a little bit because I know my acrylics will dry down. It'll dry a little bit darker. So I kind of plan for that here as I'm building that rose. That's kind of good. I, got, I did get rid of some of that yellow in there that I really liked because I painted too much. And uh, so I'll just whisper that back in, some of that color. I did like that, and I can push it back in there too, because it's underneath there. I can push and lift off and get some of that back, but I do want to build this edge a little bit lighter and just lift off. See, I like, like that little movement. Try not to destroy that, Dave. There we go, just like that. And that's kind of pretty. That's kind of a, a pretty run of the roses and the color here. Let's take, um, some yellow, a little bit of black here, and some of this. Yeah, that could go more green. So we'll have a bit of blue. Oof. It takes just a tiny bit of that phthalo blue. It's so powerful. And with a bit of that red here. Oh, that's kind of a pretty green. 
and we'll push on some of these use a little more black right up around the edges of the roses here maybe right up along here just and I'm just going to do casual suggestive leaves you know you could uh, make some uh, you know a, a bit more uh, shape and pull off just a bit you could shape them up a bit maybe a little bit more of one lighter one I do like to vary the color and tone of my leaves going around because you should that is the you know that gives beauty to what we do changing colors if the roses are changing colors your leaves should be ch changing colors as well here let's get a little lighter a bit of some of this light down and a few little movements I like to get just real casual movements here to suggest stems and other little things going on and stuff you know let's suggest that darkened in some of that light it's kind of nice you can uh, suggest just a real quick little uh, vein lines here just the little suggestions of those like I've showed you before those work pretty nice and that's kind of a pretty um, set you got a nice beautiful uh, you know heavy set rows there and the rest of them all work so boy that's a no mics can pick that up that's a big jet but uh, we'll uh, Put in just a bit more here onto this one and again like you decide and maybe just since I lightened up that one main queen there quite a bit maybe we'll pull this one in just a bit more there like that and I think that's enough it's kind of a fun so there's with some of the open medium you can see you adjust your techniques a little bit you don't stroke as much because you you kind of mix that tone put it on the power is there. If you touch it and touch it, it's going to disappear. That's what's going to happen because everything's wet and they're going to blend together. And that's why I'm not a blender. I don't like to blend because things just disappear on me when I blend. And, you know, I'm a bit, very big blender. If you're feeling the need to blend, you're making the wrong tone. Get in and study your tones and stuff, okay? So, okay. There you go. There's another one. Nice, fun little painting. It makes a nice gift. You know, you have all different kinds of them that we're doing here. And we're going to be doing a whole bunch more. Like I said, I'm going to do some birds. I'm going to do some small landscapes and all that kind of stuff. But I thought I'd get some of these out of the way since so many of you really like the roses. So I'll show you some different types that we can do here. Okay, but we're going to do some more. we got a long, we got a long time till the holidays, so we, got a, we can do a lot of them. Okay? Okay, make sure you go over and visit us on the JansenArtStudio.com. Make sure you come join us on our social network on MeWe where we can talk about all the paintings and stuff like that. And I go there every day and visit and and help and we've got lots of teachers. So come join us. It's a lot of fun. Okay? Alrighty guys, I'll see you on the next one.